Welcome to this second video on field normalization. In the first video, we looked at the normalization feature itself in the application, but there is also a second feature for data transformation. So if we wanted to manipulate data in any way, for example, to round up or down certain values to the nearest integer, we can do that. If you wanted to change the case of certain strings, we can do that as well, as well as perform other operations very easily without any code whatsoever. So let's get started. Again, we've got some demo records here uh, that we can take a look at. Actually, some of these demo records aren't quite completely configured as we will soon see. So I've got examples here for transforming computer names, disk space amounts, uh, RAM amounts, uh, etc. Each one of these transformations can use a library of transform definitions, which we'll see in the documentation here. So you can change the case of values. You can uh, uh, use constants uh, to replace values. You can delete and insert values. Uh, you can replace values. You can insert prefixes, uh, etc. You can round uh, numbers according to some different calculation or different rounding methods. Uh, and so forth. So the type of field that you are transforming will determine what transform definitions are available. Not all of them are available for every type of field. And in actual fact, there is only a, a certain number of field types that are available for transformations in the first place. So or out of the box anyway, you can modify this list, but by default, only these field types can be transformed. Okay, so let's have a look at an example here for this space. We can see here we're just kind of rounding uh, numbers uh, up or down uh, depending on the value here. Uh, if we go to the second one, which may be a little bit more helpful for us, uh, the RAM example here, we can see again in the transformation record, there can be one or more transforms using those transform definitions that we just looked at. We'll actually come back to this record here and we'll take a close look. We'll actually have to modify some values here so that they actually work. If we look at the, the last name example here, uh, we can remove certain values from last names that we don't really want to record uh, in the instance. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, before we go any further with those examples, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new computer record and just give this a name, all caps here, test computer, and save it. And we can see already that a transformation has been applied here because it's no longer all up, uppercase. Uh, it's just test computer or lowercase except for the first letter of the first word. And that's because in our transformation here for the computer name, we're doing a few things here. If we go to the third transform here, the make lower, uh, we can see here that the mode that's being used here is proper, which basically means we're just going to initialize uh, the first letter of the first word. Okay, so you can make it all uppercase, lowercase, or there's a couple of different other ones uh, that you can use uh, as well here. All right, so that's why we've got our test computer with a capital T only. All right, if we go back to our normalization example here for RAM, We'll just have a look at each of these transforms. So let's have a look at the first one, sanity. That basically just sets a minimum and maximum value for that field. So at the moment, uh, it doesn't really make all that much sense because we've got a minimum value of zero and a maximum of one, which basically means, well, we can either have either a zero or one uh, in this field because this field is actually an integer field. So they're the only two options that we've got at the moment. So if we go back to our computer, if I were to put a value in here, such as 1024 and save it, well, it's going to be rounded down <laughs> to the maximum value of one. And if I delete that and save it again, well, we've got to have a minimum value and that's going to be zero. So that doesn't really make that much sense for us. So let's change that. I'm going to change the minimum to 1024 and set the maximum to 196,608, okay? So if I save that, and then we'll move on to the second transform here, which uh, again, we'll need a little bit of work uh, to make it work because at the moment it doesn't really make that much sense. So we've got uh, a couple of different transforms here, depending on whether if we have uh, a value over or under a gigabyte. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the last one here so that we only have um, one more transform here, which says under a gigabyte. And I'm going to re rename this to round to the nearest 512. So we're going to accept uh, an integer, but only in increments of 512, which is usually how RAM sizes are recorded in this day and age. So <laughs> we're going to keep the motors half up. So we'll just round up to um, the nearest 512 uh, value. You know, if we've got like uh, an integer that's halfway uh, between the two increments. If we want to as well, we can actually specify a filter to say, okay, we only want to perform this transformation when records have certain characteristics, have certain values. So a certain class of uh, computer or a certain manufacturer or whatever. And because this is going to be the last transform, I'm going to check this final checkbox here. Okay, we're not going to add any other transformations once this is completed. So I'll save that record. So now if we go back and change the 1024 to 1025 and save that, it's going to go back to 1024 because that is, well, 512 times 2. That's what you get, okay? And because 1024 is closer to 1025 than 1536, we're rounding down to 1024. If we take another example and try... 4100, that's going to be rounded down to 4096. One more example, 16,200 will be rounded up to 16,384, okay, and so forth. All right, so hopefully you've gotten a, a little bit of an idea now of how this feature works. It's relatively straightforward. Again, for every transformation definition or every transform that you want to perform, you can have various transform actions uh, that are performed in a sequential order. All right, let's go back to another table here or my table that we were looking at before the normalization demos. I've got two email addresses here, uh, one that is in all uppercase and the second one here where only the, the first letter of each name uh, is in uppercase. And we just want to have a standard normalized value or actually that's actually not correct. We want to have a, we want to transform to lowercase. We don't want to specify a normalized value as such. We just want to specify the formatting um, that we want to have here. And that should be in all lowercase. So what I'll do here, I'm going to create a new transformation record and just call this convert email to lowercase. Again, select the table here, the field that I want to transform. And if I want to as well, I can have a raw field, but in this case, I don't. So I'm just going to leave that. And again, uh, I'm going to leave our normalize a normalized query uh, as is. So I'll save that. So this works in a similar way to what we saw before with our normalization. So at the moment, now this is kind of set up, it's ready to go. So if I create a new record, uh, it's going to convert it all to lowercase as soon as I put a transform in here. This is going to be a very simple one. So I'm going to select change case here. Specify that I'm going to convert to lowercase to make it clear to everyone. And then select the mode to lower. And I don't need to add any other conditions here. It's going to be the final transform as well. So the one and only and submit it. And you can see here it's created a corresponding data job now to transform any existing values that we have in that table to lowercase. So I'm going to go ahead and activate it as well. And then start that job. So remember, you need to set the mode to active in order to start these data jobs. Okay, so if I do that, start the job well don't take a moment to run there's only two records here so now if i come back to my table here and refresh they've now been converted to lowercase pretty simple huh if i go ahead and create a new record and put in some email address uh, that is not all lowercase it's going to convert it to lowercase one thing you'll notice uh, for normalized and transform fields uh, you'll see this little uh, icon here to indicate that a 
field has been normalized or transformed, if you click on it, it will take you to the respective configuration. Uh, in the system properties, however, there is uh, a way in which you can specify or restrict who can see that icon. So in this case, I could just make it available to admins only so no one gets confused or distracted uh, by this. So that's how you use field normalization in ServiceNow. Remember, it contains two features. Normalization, which means we can normalize field values and not just the company name, but any field value to some standard normal value as well as transformation. So if we want to change or manipulate the data in some way to some other value, we can do that as well quite easily. In the next videos, we're going to look at the normalization features briefly in hardware asset management and software asset management. So stay tuned for those ones.